Fast sedans have room for your kids, room for your stuff, and are fast, which makes them awesome. But how fast is fast? Here's the Q50 Hybrid. It's fast with 360 horsepower. Not enough? Well, what about the Genesis 5 liter? 420 horsepower from the V8 in this big Hyundai. No, well, there's this, the M5. It's priced in six-figure territory, has a simply bonkers 555 horsepower, and was, for a time, considered about the fastest sedan in the world. For a time, because the new cat from Dodge has taken the bar for go fast four doors and snapped it in half. No, no, not that cat. Here it is the Charger SRT Hellcat. Leave it to Dodge to work the word hell into a car's name and forget that it's a big four door automatic sedan at its core. This thing is an absolute monster. It's got as much horsepower as two Porsche 911s. These Brembo brakes have rotors the size of trash can lids. It'll run the quarter mile in 11 seconds on street tires and brakes into the tens with drag slicks at the strip. And that's with room for the kids, cup holders, and air conditioning and heated seats. Some cars this fast have parachutes in back. None of that here, just a big trunk. So it's as fast as a drag car and you can take it to Home Depot. And wherever you wind up going, it'll attract a great big crowd of onlookers with silly grins and lots of questions. And why not? There's virtually nothing on the road with four doors and a warranty that'll keep up to this. It's 30 grand cheaper than that M5 with 150 more horsepower. That makes you want to know what's under this heavily vented hood, complete with intakes and heat extractors and that curious bulge. Here it is, an SRT V8 with, you'll notice, a bit of a supercharger driven by a treadmill belt. The numbers, 6.2 liters, 650 pounds of torque, and grab a bib car guys, 707 horsepower. There's an 8-speed paddle shift automatic that hammers through the gears like an old school auto box with a shift kit, burning rubber during full throttle upshift if your boot is on the carpet. And you can set this all up however you like. The computer system lets you pick the feel and setup of the steering transmission, shocks, traction controls, which I'd strongly suggest leaving turned on, and even the power output level. Digital meters and gauges help you to keep an eye on everything right down to the temperature of the intercooler coolant, and you can even get a digital drag strip time slip right in the dash thanks to onboard sensors. Or turn up the launch control RPM if you're burning up drag slicks at the strip instead of the pricey Pirelli P0s. In any case, the acceleration is lethal. You'll swear loudly every time you give it full throttle. Your passengers will drop sequential F-bombs, and for those faint of heart, the acceleration will leave them wearing straight jackets and trying to fight their own gear. What are you going to do with all that speed? Well, motorsports. Hellcat will provide maximum return on investment for owners planning to participate in weekend racing at the strip or circuit, and it's built, engineered, validated, and equipped for it. Heck, the driveline is so beefed up, you can actually hear the gears in the rear diff from inside the car. Handling, steering, and braking match the monstrous power output, and this is not just a straight-line weapon. Magnetically adjustable shocks keep the big, heavy body from throwing its weight around too much, adding stability and confidence during high-speed maneuvers. The steering is fast and matched well to the weight of the car and the setup of the suspension, and those monster brakes do have an awful lot of weight to deal with, but they're as instant and startlingly powerful as the acceleration and built to take the heated track day. Hellcat is a big, heavy car, but most drivers will run out of courage long before the Hellcat runs out of capability. So, what's it like driving a car with as much horsepower as Civic, Focus, Elantra, Sentra, and Corolla combined? Well, mostly when you're driving the Hellcat with your boot down a little bit, you're thinking this is pretty stupid, but I'm having a great time. Obviously, now, much of what this machine can do is wasted on public roads. Five seconds or more of consecutive full throttle, even from a standstill, will rocket you deep into demerit point territory. And I've never driven anything that was such a threat to my driver's license. And you will get noticed in this car too, because it makes a noise like the dragsters that your buddies tow to the track on weekends. They do give you two keys though. There's this red one for the full 707 horsepower, and this black one here that only gives you 500 if you're into driving gently. No thank you. It's not all performance mayhem and excess. Drive gently, and once you get used to the agonizing whine of the supercharger begging to be opened up, and the rumbly bumbly exhaust note, and the mechanical sounds from the driveline that you don't hear in most cars, it's a comfortable place to relax. Put the shocks in street mode and idle down the highway, and this Hellcat is happy to get you and yours around in comfort. It's not even terrible on gas. Seriously, my test average over a week was hardly worse than driving a big family SUV or pickup. 
The boss says I have to talk about other things than the performance. All right, the Hellcat has room to spare for four people and good fit and finish with fancy panels of red suede and heated seats and these are the cup holders. Who cares? None of that is why you buy one of these. Here it's all about bragging rights and knowing that basically nothing that gets up in your business at a traffic light stands a chance. Try not to smirk like a schoolgirl when telling your buddies that you just bought a car with 700 horsepower and it's pretty fun too. Get your Hellcat to the track, otherwise Hellcat's engineers will be sad that you're not enjoying the full out bananas pandemonium performance they created for you. Also, and importantly, drive this one carefully. For serious, it's lethally fast, and this car will get ugly in a hurry if you're not driving it with absolute respect. On a side note, this is the 300th episode of my show. And I've yet to come across anything this potent, badass, and awesome. Usually I show you some graphics now about what you'll like and what you won't, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory here. Plus, if I skip those, I can give you more of this, which I don't think you'll mind. Thanks for listening, and turn it up. Yeah.